Welcome to the basic setup video of Dim Drive, where we will do the initial setting up of Dim Drive and show you where you can easily and quickly see benefit from using this program. Uh, so basically run the Dim Drive program. You will get your Dim Drive interface. You'll notice right away all your Steam games are listed if you use Steam. Otherwise, you will want to configure your games or programs or whatever using the other programs um, area. So what we're going to do is we're going to initially load it, which we just did. And we want to configure, let's say, a Steam game. So what we're going to do is just look at all the Steam games that we have loaded automatically. Let's say we want, uh, let's say Duke Nukem, because I, I love this game. You'll want to click to enable Duke Nukem by clicking the on button. What Dim Drive will do is Dim Drive will load up where you have Duke Nukem installed. And it'll ask you what is the executable that launches Duke Nukem. You'll select Duke 3D, whatever. And uh, then you'll hit, or the program will turn green, indicating to you that Dim Drive is configured for that particular game. It's not running for that game, but it's configured for that game right now. You'll also notice that it'll show the size of that game, 0.6 gigs, 0.8 gigs, 14 gigs for Skyrim, which is a huge game, uh, Torchlight, two gigs, and so on and so forth. Um, what you'll just need to do is make sure that the drive that you're going to use for dim drive is at least a little bit larger than the game that you're going to create. Um, so if your game is 0.6 gigs, you'd want to do 1 gig or 2 gig or whatever. You could have it as large as you want, but just make sure some games update themselves, have save files and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you have the game the proper size. So you'll set that up and then you'll configure a drive letter and you'll hit the big on switch. Now, before we set that up, before we hit that on switch, let me show you something else. Uh, let me show you configuring a program in Dim Drive other than a game. So let's say you're doing this right here. This is Crystal Disk Mark. We were doing some benchmarks earlier. Let me show you one of the Dim Drive benchmarks right here. Eight, between close to six to eight gigabytes per second. And keep in mind, I'm recording a video right now. And when I record a video, my system is you know, as you can see, I have 36%, 24%. My system is bogged down. So my benchmarks aren't really reflective, truly, of what Dim Drive would do. But let's configure Crystal Disk Mark. We're just going to click this and drag it directly into Dim Drive. And bam, you'll see the icon right there. You'll notice that it's pre-configured. You can see where it's actually installed at. It tells you how large it is. I've got Dim Drive set to be 10 gigs, so it does a little, little calculation right here. 10 gigs right here. We have 9.1 gigs available, roughly when we factor in Duke Nukem and then Crystal Disk Mark. And sometimes we leave a little bit of elbow room for your operating system to run. Auto load this program. Um, if we want to get rid of it, we just hit the trash can and delete it. So we'll go ahead and hit close. If we want to add a program without actually clicking and dragging it, you can just click add and select whatever the program is from your, uh, your desktop. Um, let's actually add a folder into here. A little test folder right there. So we're gonna just click OK. Now notice that there's things that are added. You don't necessarily want to run all these things out of your dim drive at one given moment in time. Let's say you're like me and you have 10 different games. You have World of Warcraft, you have Skyrim, you have Duke Nukem, you have whatever type of games. Um, I use GOG a lot, good old games to uh, install games. So I have a lot of GOG uh, games as well. Just because you have it set up in Dim Drive doesn't mean you actually need to run that particular game. So for now, we're going to have Duke Nukem set up. We're going to have a test folder. And by the way, this test folder has just a couple videos you'll notice right here. And let me just drag this back over here. And we're going to configure Dim Drive for those few things. We're going to set 10 gigs, and then we're just going to click the On button. So we'll click On. It's creating the drive. And when it creates a drive, it needs to copy files from your actual hard drive onto the Dim Drive. And uh, you know the files are copying right there. And once it's done, the switch is flipped to the on position, the green position. Dim drive is now active. And you'll notice that you have play now. If we, and I, I'm not going to set this up. I'm not going to actually play Duke Nukem. But if I click this button right now, Duke Nukem would launch. And Duke Nukem would launch out of my RAM drive. So imagine you have a normal platter drive, uh, a mechanical drive that's maybe... 80 megabytes per second or, or 110 megabytes per second and you're launching games you're loading maps you're loading levels at 110 megabytes per second now imagine you load that game out of dim drive and you're getting six 
thousand megabytes per second versus a hundred megabytes per second. It is a, I can't express this enough, it is ginormous. A big thing that people don't realize is your graphic card has a, a limited amount of memory. Uh, let's say one gig or two gigs. Your game may be 10 gigs. You are going to swap in and out of your graphics card graphic files constantly. And that is gonna cause levels to load slowly, explosions to cause your system to lag, your frame rate's gonna drop. When you have very fast access between your hard drive and your video card, it is a world of a difference. Look at the really high-end games. Look at, uh, look at Arma. Um, I personally multi-box in World of Warcraft. I, I will play five to 10 copies of World of Warcraft at once. It's pretty crazy, I know. Um, but for me, when I'm playing 10 copies of World of Warcraft on one computer at one time, the disk IO is paramount for me, which is why I created Dim Drive in the first place. So anyway, we have these things set up. We could click Duke Nukem and launch it, but we're not really gonna do that. But we can click, let's say, my test folder and launch it. You notice it's over here. So I have uh, a couple of videos that I've been making on Dim Drive. Um, click it and it starts. Uh, Crystal Disk Mark it loads immediately. It's a pretty small program, but you can load the program directly from Dim Drive, or you can actually just load up the, uh, the drive however else you would and access the files directly in the drive. Now, Dim Drive is very unique when it comes to RAM Drive program because Dim Drive will actually manage your content, the game that you are playing, so, or the program that you're running. So for example, we've set up disk, uh, Crystal Disk Mark in Dim Drive what Dim Drive does is it takes a copy of that program, and this is a tiny program, but imagine this is, let's say, StarCraft II, or imagine if it's uh, Call of Duty, or if it's Duke Nukem, or Firefox, or whatever it is. Imagine it's something else. Um, Dim Drive will take that program and put it on itself, and then it manages the program. And by managing the program, it looks at files that are modified or updated or created new or whatever it is and it will synchronize that file with your hard drive and let me just show you right now um, every time you run crystal disk mark it and you close it it writes it rewrites an ini file with just your basic configurations now when we run it from dim drive it writes an ini file and you can see it right here so we've ran it out of dim drive, and then you have this little menu here that says file sync. Now what happened is when we ran it, it modified the INI file, and right away dim drive saw that modification of that file, and it wrote it back to your original hard drive. And that is, that is extremely important. Because imagine you're playing a game, and let's say it's a single player game, and you have a save file in that game, and you spend hours playing the game, and then you shut down your computer, and then load it up the next day, and all your data is gone. What Dim Drive does is, when you save that game, or when, you, when maybe the game updates, or you change a configuration file, Dim Drive will take that file, it will take the disk mark x64.ini, and it'll synchronize it with your hard drive. So that way you don't lose any data. If you reboot your system, you don't lose data. If you're, if you're playing and you save the game and then 10 minutes later your PC loses power, well, when you save that game and that file was created initially, Dim Drive is gonna take that file and it's gonna move it over to your hard drive and it's gonna make sure that that file is there, which is really nice for when your game updates, when you have save files or whatever, maybe you're using Photoshop and you're updating some Photoshop documents and you want them synchronized between your dim drive and whatever. So um, let me just give you a little example right here. We have test folder. We're going to create a little document right here. And so this is on my dim drive. You see my Y drive test folder, which is this thing right here. We're going to create a document and it's going to be called um, blah. Okay, whatever. So we have a document called blah. Now notice right here that we have a, a file that just synchronized, which is also called blah. So when we created that new file, Dim Drive saw that new file, and then it synchronized it with uh, the actual um, hard drive that originally this came from. 
and uh, it, it works really nice. Um, I've actually tested it with VMware. And if you guys know anything about VMware, VMware writes files that are like 20 plus gigabytes in size. And, DM, and Dim Drive will synchronize files that are 20 gigabytes in size. It takes a little bit longer, but as you imagine, game save files are probably a couple megs and so on and so forth. So it runs really good. Um, that's basically it. I mean, that's the very basic uh, setup of Dim Drive. When you're done using it, or you want to switch switch open or switch over to a different game, you essentially just hit the off button, and Dim Drive will stop any synchronizations that happen to be in progress, and you get the original interface that shows the games that you want to have configured and you can just go from there. So let's say I don't want to play Duke Nukem. I'm going to turn Duke Nukem off. I no longer want these two programs. In fact, I want to delete this folder. I want to delete Crystal Disk Mark and I want to put in Firefox. So let's say we want to do a different program. Um, we did a game, we did a folder, and we did Crystal Disk Mark. But uh, if you have other programs like uh, Photoshop or other games, you essentially can just click, drag the game in there. Dim Drive will auto configure itself for that game or that program or whatever. You can right click and add new. And uh, that's basically it. So while D Dim Drive essentially is focused on games and focus on gamers, but it will work with any program. Um, we've got Firefox, uh, we could set up Crystal Disk Mark, we could set up uh, Notepad, we could set up Photoshop, but it essentially is very gamer focused. Um, now let me show you a couple other options here. You'll notice if we have no games configured, we can still tell it to open up a drive. Now if you don't want Dim Drive to manage uh, the games itself, you can still use it as a traditional RAM drive and it's exceedingly fast. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna make sure nothing is configured here. And we're just going to set a certain drive size. We're gonna use 10 gigabytes again. And we're gonna just enable dim drive. So click the on button, it creates the drive. There's nothing to copy over, so uh, the setup of it is quite quick. Click on open drive and there you are. You have your uh, dim drive right here. And when you create a drive that's a blank drive, that removes dim drive from the management portion of it. So dim drive won't synchronize a drive if you don't set up the program initially through dim drive. So depending on the type of program you're running, that may be an option that you want uh, You want that. You don't want dim drive to synchronize the game. Um, and, but if you do, you just drag the game, drag the folder, drag whatever over um, to the other programs area. So that should be the very basics of dim drive. Um, let me show you some of the other things that are more options, kind of fancy things to dim drive. We have our drive lever set up. Why? Uh, dim drive has a benchmark tool built into it. Now one thing I want to make clear about dim drive, this, is, this program is continually updating. We'll probably release a new version, um, maybe even every week for quite some time, fixing any bugs that come up, adding new features, getting lots of feedback from the general gaming community. And the developers, you know, myself, uh, I'm a huge gamer, and so as I play more and more games and figure out what I like, I'm going to add it into Dim Drive. So anyway, one of the things that I added just for fun is a little benchmark. So click the HD benchmark tool. And this isn't as sophisticated as Crystal Disk Mark, and I would even say that this is, is not a replacement for other benchmarks that you have. Um, I'm not 100% on how these other benchmarks function, but I just kind of created one how I thought a benchmark tool would function. So you can benchmark all your drives, click one button, and does all your drives. Or we can do just this particular drive. So um, we're just going to pick the Y drive, we're going to hit start and we're gonna watch the benchmark in progress. And it's pretty quick. And the way it does benchmarks is a little bit different. So whereas you may see numbers closer to seven or eight gigabytes per second with Crystal Disk Mark, with Dim Drive you'll see numbers that are a lot less. And it has to do with the queue depth and the synchronicity of how we're actually doing our benchmark. Um, and then you'll see like a little text file here. You can click Save as Image and so on. So one of the things as Dim Drive grows as a program, the goal is to add all sorts of little fun little things to dim drive. Now let me show you a little bit more. Um, even though this is the basic setup, we're going to show you some startup options. So you click this little menu right here. You see a little box here. Um, 
what you can do is when dim drive runs for you you can run it by itself and every time just run it like a program load it up and do whatever you want or you can make dim drive launch when your pc boots up and if you have some really large games that take a couple moments to copy over that may be something that you want to do so you could launch on startup and then once it launches you could actually tell it to activate dim drive so if it just launches it it, it turns on what you see here minus the on state but if you want it to turn itself on then you have to click this option right here now i wanted to note something really quick for you guys um, when your computer shuts down dim drive doesn't doesn't necessarily do anything so other types of RAM drives, when your computer shuts down, that RAM drive has to take all the contents of it and then write it to a gigantic file. If you have a 10 gigabyte RAM drive, other pro programs will have to write a 10 gigabyte file. Well, DIMM drive doesn't do that because when you use the DIMM drive program, it manages all the content and synchronizes files on the fly in real time. So when you shut down, you don't have to do this giant, giant writing, which is really nice. Um, let me show you another option that I love. It's one of the my favorite things to do in Dim Drive. So we're just going to turn it off. Uh, there's no synchronization, um, stopping the drive, so on. We're going to configure what we call USB 3 drive turbo mode. Now, this is a little bit complex, but essentially when Dim Drive runs, it pulls data off of your it pulls data off of your hard drive and loads it into dim drive so when dim drive first runs it goes hard drive into dim drive okay now imagine your hard drive imagine your hard drive is the same drive that your operating system runs at if that hard drive gets while your system's booting that hard drive probably is only going to get maybe 20 to 40 megabytes per second so we'll say at boot hd is we'll say because it's doing so many other so many other things it's loading windows loading any other programs you have all these sorts of things so in addition to doing that it could probably only cap copy at least from my test right around 20 mb seconds um, into dd now what the usb 3.0 turbo mode does is if you have a usb stick that is really fast like i have a uh I have a SanDisk, uh, let's see here. It is a SanDisk Extreme, and it's a 16 gigabyte disk. It costs me $17.99. This drive, this USB disk gets 200 megabytes per second. Um, we're gonna say my USB 3 is, it's actually 210 megabytes per second. We'll say roughly 210 megabytes per second. So what happens now, I'm gonna configure this and I'm going to tell dim drive when I first run dim drive dim drive is going to go it's going to take files from your hard drive it's going to copy into dim drive but at the same time um, at we're going to type this here at the same time dim drive will copy to USB 3 so we're going to enable dim drive on my USB 3 drive we're going to hit finish now what what that's going to do is the first time I load whatever, let's let's pick a, let's pick actually a game that's fairly large here. Let's do let's do Call of Duty right here. Eight point nine gigs. Let's actually make this eleven. Now, the first time dim drive loads, it's going to copy from hard drive to dim drive, but while it's doing that, it's also going to copy it to the USB 3. And then the, and then the second time it loads, so then uh, at second run, it's going to go USB 3 into dim drive. So imagine when your computer first boots up. You, when you first boot up, you'll get 20 megabytes per second into dim drive. Now imagine the second boot um, we'll say at second boot, it's going to go USB 3, um, it's going to go 200, 
200 megabytes per second into dim drive. So the first time you boot, imagine doing 20 megabytes per second writing your game into dim drive. The second time, 200 megabytes per second. That's what my USB drive is. So my USB does 210. Um, I've seen them go as high as 240. Um, and that's, that's significant. And again, the reason why your hard drive is initially slow, if you just have one hard drive in your computer, like, like a lot of people do, when you first boot, that hard drive is loading Windows, it's doing all sorts of stuff. And I've noticed that you can only get so fast. Um, even if you have multiple hard drives, this really frees up a lot of speed. And it's just kind of, it's kind of cool, the fact that you can copy data into your dim drive through a method that's not your traditional type of hard drive. So we're gonna show you what that looks like real quick. This is gonna be a lot of fun here. And we're gonna show you what that looks like in a second video. So thank you for watching this video and get ready to watch our second video.